Okay, so this is special products of radical expressions, conjugates, and squaring. So same thing as before, we're going to FOIL this out. So this times this would give me square root of x squared. This times this would give me positive square root of 2x. Would give me negative square root of 2x, insides times insides. And then negative inside times inside gives me 4. These are the same thing, positive and negative, so let's cancel out. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of 4 is 2. And these are not like terms, so that's the final response. Here it's a square, which means it's this thing times itself. So this times this, side times outside, inside times inside outside times outside and inside times inside outside times outside and inside times inside and then outside times outside positive 1 and inside times inside I get 4 so here I get 9 times X this is these do not cancel you have negative 3 of these and another negative 3 of those which gives me negative 6 of those and then you have 1 times the square root of 4, which is 2. So I end up with 9x minus 6 square root of 2x plus 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And none of these are like terms, so this is the final response. Now for rationalizing a denominator. Essentially what you do is whatever's in the denominator, you multiply it to the top and the bottom, okay? So here I have a square root of 5, so I'm going to multiply by square root of 5 at the bottom and square root of 5 at the top. What that does is it creates a perfect square in the bottom, and so then I'll no longer have a square root. So square root of 3 times square root of 5 is square root of 15, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25, so you end up with square root of 15 over 5. And so notice there's no more radical in the denominator. So when it says rationalize a denominator, what it wants is no more radicals in the denominator. Okay. So again, the strategy is whatever is in the bottom with the square root, multiply it at the bottom and multiply it at the top to make it a perfect square, which will eventually make it come out of the house. Okay. So here I would get 2 on the outside, square root of 6 on the inside. Here I'll get square root of 36, which means I have this on the top, 6 at the bottom. The outsides can still be reduced. So the outsides can be reduced by 2, and you don't necessarily need to write that 1. So this would be the final cleaned up version of the answer. So then we have rationalizing a denominator, the square root of a function or a fraction. So it's the same thing here. You can just separate it and then do the same strategy as before. So square root of 14 times square root of 14, you get the square root of 140 over the square root of who knows 196 square root of 140 is 2 square root of 35 and square root of 196 is probably going to be 14 yep but the outside numbers can reduce so 2 goes into 2 once 2 goes into 14 seven times I do not have to write the 1 coefficient so you just get the square root of 35 over 7 now you cannot reduce that 35 and that 7 because the 7 is not inside of the square root and the 35 is inside of a square root. So that makes them different kinds of terms. Okay. Now here, same thing. Whatever's at the bottom, multiply it top and bottom. So 4 is on the outside, 3x is on the inside. They need to stay that way. Inside times inside though means I get 9x squared. And so then the 9 comes out as a 3, the x squared comes out as an x. And again, you cannot reduce these guys with what's inside of a square root. 
Only the 4 could possibly reduce with this, because this is also not inside of a square root, just like the 4 is not inside of a square root. But 4 and 3 do not reduce, so this is the final answer. Here, if you separate it first, then you could do the same thing, whatever's at the bottom, multiply it top and bottom, so you get square root of 11x over the square root of x squared. Square root of x doesn't, isn't going to change, square root of x squared is just x. And again, this x is inside of a house, this x is not, so you cannot reduce them. That's the final answer. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when you have two terms in the denominator. So when you have two terms in the denominator, what you have to do is you have to multiply by something that's called a conjugate, okay? A conjugate means you have two terms together, whether you're added or they're subtracted, okay? These are conjugates of one another, okay? So the terms stay the same. What's in the middle is what changes, okay? So basically, the first term will stay exactly the same. It's the second term that will change signs. So if I need to get rid of two terms down here, it's not going to work to just multiply by the exact same thing on the bottom, exact same thing on the top. It won't me, okay? What will help me is if I multiply these things by same sign in the front, opposite sign in the second term. Same sign in the front, opposite sign in the second term. So notice it's a plus here, now it's a minus, okay? And then you do the problem like normal. So here I'd have to distribute. I'd get negative 18 square root of 3. Here I would get positive 18. Here I would get 4 square root of 9 minus 4 square root of 3, positive 4 square root of 3, and then a negative 4. So these guys would cancel a negative and a positive. Um, and then I'd have negative 18 square root of 3 plus 18. And then 9 is 3. So times 3 is 12 minus 4. I end up with negative 18 square root of 3 plus 18 over, I believe, 8. Now this can be reduced. Okay. So they have um, a 4. No, they cannot be divided by 4. They can all be divided by 2. So if I take a 2 out of the top, I get negative 9 square root of 3 plus 2. I factor it out of 2. And at the bottom, if I factor out of a 2, it's just 2 times 4. The 2's will cancel, leaving me with negative 9 square root of 3 plus 2 over 4. A faster way to do this without reducing is if you are going to reduce a fraction, make sure you reduce every single term by the same number. So if I reduce 18 by 2, I get 9, but it would be a negative 9 with the square root of 3 attached. If I reduce this 18 by 2, uh, I should get 9, which means this should be 9, right? 2 times 9 is 18. And then at the bottom, if I reduce this by 2, I get the 4. And so notice I have negative 9 square root of 3 plus 9 over 4, okay? I prefer to do it this way. Just You can't just reduce the one in the front, and you can't just reduce the one in the back. If you're going to reduce by something, you have to reduce every single term by that, okay? So here, um, we're going to do same sign in the front, opposite sign in the middle. And make sure you do it on the top and the bottom. So for the top, I'm going to have 15 plus 6 square root of 2. For the bottom, I'm going to have 25 plus 10 square root of 2 minus 10 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 4. So these guys cancel each other out. 25 minus 4 times 2 is 8. And 25 minus 8 is 17. Now 15, 6, and 17, all the outsides, do not have anything that they can all reduce by. So this is the final answer. Now the last topic we have is very similar. It's just that the numerator has two terms as well. So remember, we're rationalizing the denominator. 
So we're going to change the sign in the middle of the denominator. So this becomes plus. And then you do the same thing at the top. I just so happen to have a binomial at the top as well. So do your foiling. I get square root of 49. I get plus square root of 14. I get plus square root of 14. And I get plus square root of 4. At the bottom, square root of 49 plus square root of 14, minus square root of 14, and minus square root of 4. So this becomes 7 plus, there's 1 here and 1 here, so that becomes 2 square root of 14, and the square root of 4 is just 2. I get 7, this is a plus and a minus, so those will cancel, and I get minus 2. And here I get 5. Now the square root of 14 does not simplify. So I would leave it alone. Nothing's going to come out. And 9, 2, and 5 cannot be reduced by anything the same. So this is the final answer.